tomorrow. I'm Laura Ingram, and this is the Ingram Angle from what feels like, I don't know, Caracas, Venezuela tonight. The web they weave. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, just hours ago, we learned more about just how petty and venal Attorney General Merrick Garland is. That he would send federal agents into the home of a former president and likely 2024 candidate over a document dispute. The Washington Post is reporting tonight that Monday's raid came months after the Trump legal team voluntarily met with government investigators at Mar-a-Lago. This was back in June. Now, the ostensible reason for the visit was the concern that some documents were retained by Trump when he left office, rather than being turned in into the National Archives. Trump stopped by the meetings as it began to uh, greet the investigators, but was not interviewed. The lawyers showed the federal officials the boxes, and DOJ officials spent some time looking through the material. According to Trump's attorney, Christina Bob, Justice Department officials commented that they did not believe the storage unit, where these moving boxes were kept, was properly secured. So Trump officials added a lock to the facility. Sounds reasonable. When the FBI agents searched the property on Monday, that Bob added that they broke through the lock that had been added to the door, of course, at the federal authorities' request. Broke, the, broke their own lock. Keystone cops here with DOJ credentials. This is absurd. If this was the basis for Garland's okaying the Mar-a-Lago route around, then Garland should resign immediately. Ditto for Christopher Wray. This is obviously a search warrant in search of a legal justification. And there's not just one rat here at work in the deep state. It took a colony of rats burrowed in to make this kind of abuse against Trump standard operating procedure. Just like the Michael Flynn interview in January 2021 was part of the setup to get Trump, and just like a disgruntled Alexander Vindman was the Dems' impeachment puppet, remember him? Now a National Archives complaint about supposed classified documents is one as well. So this perpetual attack on someone who, again, may be the GOP nominee in 2024, on bogus grounds, it's like the movies made by a bad director. The actors may change, but the performances and the plots are still lame. No one in the White House was aware that this search warrant was going to be executed on the former president's primary residence yesterday until it was reported in the media. A reminder, the White House has insisted, as we've been reporting here, it had no prior knowledge of the search in Florida yesterday. Now, nice try, kids. Go back to acting school. Of course they're going to try to claim that they didn't know about the search over at the White House. But they didn't have to know about the search as it was happening. Because as the angle pointed out last night, in a leak to the New York Times last spring, the White House said that Biden was unhappy with Garland and wanted him to be more aggressive, like a prosecutor, not like a professor or a judge. Garland's not a dumb guy. He sees a message like this from his boss in the New York Times, and he got the message. And his marching orders, yeah, he got those too. It was time to punish Trump. He doesn't need written orders via Ron Klain or Jill or Susan Rice. And by the way, other D-list actors were out today issuing a scary warning. Just as the angle anticipated last night, the regime media would seize on conservatives' justifiable outrage over the warrant as the predicate to taking away more of your freedoms. Now listen closely to the language here. The far right and Trump's troops on the far right who are screaming bloody murder on social media right now. We're keeping tabs on the fallout from the search online, including growing concerns over the reaction from possible right wing extremists. You know, these folks are often inspired to plan violence or conduct violence. So I think Trump is again playing with fire. The violent rhetoric is uh, more violent and louder than ever. Bad acting, terrible writing. The same DOJ, by the way, that is now reclassifying run-of-the-mill crimes as domestic terror, and that same DOJ that wants parents who oppose CRT to fear attending school board meetings, is the same DOJ that now wants to criminalize their political opposition, to intimidate them from speaking out or even aligning themselves in any way with Trump 
or an America First agenda. This is the entire point of this exercise. If these people get their way, China's not going to have to worry about censorship of American voices if they ever take over, heaven forbid. The Democrats will have already done their job for them. But one thing that is patently obvious tonight, the current regime was clearly surprised by the backlash they received for this political stunt, including criticisms from numerous high-profile Republicans like Glenn Youngkin, Marco Rubio I just mentioned, and Mike Pence. And the regime media is essentially reduced to asking everyone to just trust the process and let's see how it all plays out. Because Merrick Garland would never do anything untoward. Never. They don't even bother doing rudimentary reporting anymore. They're reduced to asking everyone to trust the process and just to see what happens. And they're so desperate to trash Trump, they go to the guy that they trashed for years. Today, I probably received about two dozen plus phone calls from journalists asking, what do you think was in the safe? And I think everybody should sort of stop and let's just allow the process to go forward. Mm -hmm. They want to hear things like, you know, Stormy's pink panties or the P tape autographed by Vladimir Putin or maybe some naked photos of Melania. What a slob. Well, this shows how the regime media is in complete desperation mode. They go to him trotting out this guy who sounds like a... I don't know, a casting call reject from a Donnie Brasco, you know, <laughs> it's like, what a buffoon. The regime made a bad miscalculation here on the heels of passing legislation to fund this new Gestapo at the IRS. The organization is going to be used in the same abusive, corrupt manner as the FBI and the DOJ have been used. This is a powerful argument they've handed to every Republican running across the country, House or Senate. And the Mar-a-Lago warrant drama completely took the focus off Biden's new spending bill, thus again emphasizing that the Democrats care more about hurting their political opponents than actually fixing the economy. The damage that the Biden administration has done to our government, including the Pentagon, the FBI, the CIA, the DHS, and much of the civil service, it's, I, I think it's impossible to calculate at this time. But it seems likely that many of these agencies will never recover, at least not their reputations in our lifetime. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.